Today's story is a strange location and event where 10 experienced skiers trekked up this very rigid and snowy mountain located in Russia. And out of those 10 hikers, only one survived while the other nine were found dead. But the way they were found dead still has people guessing and giving their own theories to what could have happened. From it being a alien or Bigfoot encounter to a top secret op by the KGB. But I'm only going to show what happened and let you decide for yourself. The details of this story are only possible due to the fact that there were handwritten journal entries along with photos taken leading up to their tragic deaths. This story would be famously known as the Dyatlov Pass Incident. Hi, I'm Zach and welcome to Rooted Expeditions. If you're a fan of the abandoned, historical, and strange locations and events, then you are in the right place. Hit that thumbs up and let's get started in today's location. In the cold winter of 1959, a group of experienced skiers got together to form a skiing expedition in a city that's located in Russia. This group would consist of nine people from the Euro Polytech Institute and a man by the name of Igor Dyatlov, who was their expedition leader. There was eight men and two women. There would have been another man to join the group, which would have made it 11, but the man decided to do a hiking expedition with another group somewhere else. The team would get their things together and prepare for what was supposed to be a 21-day journey. On January 23rd, 1959, Igor and his group would take a long train ride north to a small town called Ivdel, and from there they would take a bus to Visa. When they arrived, they would all pile up in a truck that took them to a logging camp. And once they arrived there, they would sled to a small abandoned mine which was called North 2. This would be their starting point to trek up the mountain with their skis. It took them about a week to get to North 2, and when they arrived to this abandoned mine, one of the group members Members, Yuri Yudin claimed to be dealing with some health issues along with having a bad knee. So Yuri started to rethink his journey with this group. He didn't think it would be a good idea to trek with the group up the mountain for another two weeks during these unpredictable Russian winters. So with this decision, he told the group that, hey, I, I just can't make it and y'all are going to have to go on without me. The group confirmed and they said their goodbyes and wished each other luck and Yuri got in his sled and he ended up turning back. This decision that Yuri made unknowingly saved his life. The group was so eager and excited to see the Kulat Siakal, the mountain of the dead. They knew the trek would be a challenge with temperatures around a daily high of 5 degrees. I can only imagine what it was like at night. On January 31st, everything seemed to be going as planned. They reached a wooded valley and they decided to lighten their load and stash some equipment and food in a cache and they would just pick it up on their way back. If you didn't know what a cache is, it is a place where people usually bury food and supplies during hiking and hunting trips so they don't have to carry extra supplies or things along their journey. Later that evening, they would end up camping that night on this section of the mountain and prepare for the next day where they would continue their leg of this hike. The next day as the group was hiking, the weather conditions seemed to be going from pretty decent to not so well. In fact, a snowstorm started to roll in, decreasing their visibility, and when this happened, it seemed that they had lost their sense of direction and started to deviate west from their destination. So instead of heading up further up the mountain like they thought they were, they ended up realizing that they made a horrible mistake. So instead of continuing on, they decided to stop where they were and set up camp so they wouldn't accidentally deviate further away from their original destination. Now, keep in mind, they were stopped right in the middle of this open area on the side of this mountain. So the snow and wind was hurling down at them along with the harsh freezing temperatures. What is strange is that there was a wooded area less than a mile downhill from where they were. The man that turned back at North 2, Yuri Yudin, suggested that Igor probably didn't want to lose the altitude that they worked so hard to gain. Or possibly he wanted to practice camping on the mountain slope. Why would you do that? Okay, moving on. So the group dug out the side of this snowy mountain and set up their tent in hopes that the snowstorm would lighten up and pass by so that they can continue up this mountain to their destination. What happened next 
is truly shocking. Now, just so you know, before the group left, they let their sports club know that they would send a telegram when they were done, letting them know that the group was fine and that they made it out safely and that they're heading back home. But they said that the earliest that they would get back was February 12th. So when February 12th passed and no message had been received from this telegram, there was no immediate reaction as delays of a few days were common with such expeditions as this one. On February 20th, the families of the expedition group started to worry when the group didn't return home. They would end up demanding a rescue team to go look for them in these in this mountain. And the head of the Ural Polytech Institute sent the first search and rescue group out, which consisted of volunteer students and teachers. Later, the army and police forces would get involved with planes and helicopters joining in in this search to find this group. Then on February 26th, the search and rescue found the group's abandoned and badly damaged tent on the side of this mountain. The state in which the campsite was found in shocked the search party. One of the searchers who found the tent stated that the tent was half torn down and covered with snow. It was empty and all the group's belongings and boots had been left behind. Later on, investigators said and stated that the tent had been cut open from the inside. Nine sets of footprints were shown leaving the campsite heading down to the wooded edge that was about less than a mile downhill from where their campsite was. That's the same wooded area that was less than a mile downhill from where they set up camp. The footprints in the snow leading away from the campsite show that the team were not running or trying to get away from something. The prints were inconsistent to people walking away calmly, but there was one major problem. The footprints in the snow showed that the group that left the campsite and left their tents didn't leave wearing boots. The prints showed that they walked either barefoot or in their own socks. So they walked in the snow without their boots. So something's wrong with that. <laughs> okay. At the forest edge, under a large pine tree, the searchers found the visible remains of attempted fire. That's where they found the first two bodies. It was two of the men from the group cuddled together, shoeless and dressed only in their underwear. The tree that they were under had some broken limbs about 16 feet up, which indicated that at some point they must have tried to climb this tree to possibly get away from something or maybe to get a better vantage point to see where they were. Who knows the real reason? But what is even stranger is that the autopsy show that the two men had scraped their hands trying to climb this tree. They also had chunks of flesh missing from their bodies, consisting of bite marks, along with finding human flesh in the tree in one of the men's mouth and it also showed that their bodies were turned over after they were already dead. Why would they be in their underwear and with no boots? What really happened? Okay, moving on. So between where the camp and the pine trees were, where that wooded area was, was less than a mile from their campsite, they ended up finding three more bodies 500 feet apart from each other. They found two more men and a woman that was a part of the same group and one of those men that they found was expedition leader Igor Dyatlov. It was suggested that they were trying to return back from the wooded area that they tried to get to and when they turned back to head back to camp to the tent they ended up dying from the harsh winter that took their lives. Finding the remaining four travelers became a bit of a task. It took search and rescue more than two months to find them. On May 4th, under about 13 feet of snow in a ravine which was about 246 feet further down from where they found the two bodies next to that pine tree. Now, three of the four bodies were better dressed than the others that were found, and there were signs that some of the clothing of those who had died first had been removed. Okay, so the other four must have removed the clothes off the two deceased bodies by the pine tree after they died, right? I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. So there were signs that the group managed to survive longer than the others. There were more signs to show that one of the men tried to treat his wounds by ripping up clothing and wrapping it around his cuts and bruises. Other than that, upon finding the four remaining group members, they looked normal from the outside, just showing that the harsh winter took their lives. 
Now, this is where it kind of gets strange. Upon autopsy, it shows that the three other looked like they were hit by a car. One of the men and remaining woman had serious fractures to their chest, while the other man had his skull crushed. Autopsy showed that this could not be done by any human. It had to be something else to cause this type of injury. To add one more thing, the group had built a makeshift shelter out of snow and some sticks, but they never made it into the shelter. And there were clothes found next to the shelter that belonged to the other deceased members of the group that were found by the pine tree. Oddly enough, they weren't used. But there was something that stood out above the rest. They were scanning the bodies and equipment of the deceased group members with a Geiger counter which if you didn't know what a Geiger counter is, is a device that detects radiation or radiation levels. So while they were using this device on the final deceased bodies and equipment that they found, they noticed very high levels of radiation on some of the clothing that belonged to the group members indicating at some point they were exposed to high doses of radiation. The investigator's final conclusion on this terrible event was that it was caused by Igor Dyatlov's irresponsible leadership, pushing the team too hard instead of taking the extra precautions to keep them safe. But it seems that the entire team was overcame by this natural force that they were not prepared or able to overcome. I will not be going over the list of theories if you would like to hear some of those theories, I will leave a link down below so that you can check it out. Let me know what you think truly happened in the comments below. I'd like to thank Candace Shellnut for bringing this story to me so that I can share it with you guys. Here is a little bit of history for you. Hit that thumbs up. Peace. I love you. And as always, God bless.